Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video is a how to build on the uh, 2022 Halloween Easton. So this is of course the Awakened Easton, as you can tell by the Ultima and the Relic, which is the Healing Relic with Shiro Tall Gauge. But she has been recently added to the uh, latest anniversary and I thought I'd do a how to build for her because I pulled her. So uh, let's get into her stats. So her stats, she is more of a support backline character. So her stats don't really need to be that high. She has decent crit resistance. I give her that uh, really high recovery rate for some reason. But everything else is very low, very low pierce and resistance, meaning that she would get obliterated by 90% of the meta nowadays. But of course, as I said, she's mainly a um, she's mainly a support character, so it doesn't really matter about her substats at all. Overall, she actually has not too bad CC. I'll show you the outfits I have for her now. Uh, you know, missing a weapon, and I've got all the edges. So yeah, she's got decent CC, bear in mind the gear she actually has on. Uh, her, her ultimate, Flood, it's okay. Of course, she's not actually built for damage, so Flood isn't really that impactful. Especially when she's not meant for DPS. She, she probably could be turned into a DPS if you run the right team with her. But you wouldn't really want her to be a DPS because of uh, her cards that she has. She's a Flood single target card. Once again, I think this is like... Oh cool, yeah, she has this as well. But the Flood single target, I think, is just in case you do want to sort of turn her into a DPS, so let's say 4v4s out. Uh, you could, in theory, turn her into a DPS and get her to do somewhat decent damage. It wouldn't be like... Uh, I'm going to say it's not going to be like, you know, the Ultima 1 damage or Pugdrain melee damage, but you can get it to do, like, decent pierce character damage if you have the right characters on the team. Not Gizlane damage, because Gizlane da is damage is on a whole different level. <laughs> it's stupid how much damage she does, because Pierce is a, a non-critting Pierce character. You can get to do that. Uh, passive, increase human allies' basic stats by 7% for each enemy defeated in PvP. Of course, this is a PvP-only passive. Uh, if an, a human ally defeats an enemy during the ally's turn, removes 2 or gauge from the armor gauge of all enemies at the end of the turn. So, why this is so broken? So, there are three characters that have a passive or an ability like this. You've got uh, Gurheed, which is her relic that does the exact same effect. Apart from it only does this uh, bottom, the en if the enemy is defeated, uh, the human... Uh, sorry, yeah. It's pretty much if, if you defeat an enemy, the Gurheed's one is not race-tied. So, if anyone defeats an enemy, it lowers the 2 or gauge at the end of the turn, which is pretty useful. Especially if you're versing uh, Suicide Lears or Blue Fraudrin. You know, you can just kill the character without having to worry about them getting their ultimate, and you can kill their tank, whether that be Deanne or uh, Twigo, you can just remove them as well, boom, they lose even more ult gauge. It's really, really good. Uh, the other one is Athena, who of course is a collaboration character, so she's not the easiest, she hasn't been out since 2021, so that'll be two years of this year, which is quite a big gap in between. So she is probably the current best, let's say, if, and let's say you start playing during the Jobless Reincarnated collaboration, and you wanted, and let's say you, you pulled her, you've got Rudius, you've got, uh, I'm going to say you've got Red Excalibur Arthur, and you pulled, and you were lucky enough to pull the ultimate one. You've got a very good human team there, you've got Rudius, you'll of course be uh, a DPS, you've got Escanor, that's going to be probably your primary DPS. You've got uh, Arthur for the HP buff as well as damage increase, as well as a taunt character to ensure that your other two characters can survive, because the other two are a little squishy, uh, talking like about like Pogotro melees and other stuff like that, they can be pretty squishy. And of course, if you have her at the back as well, 7% basic stats. Let's just say it's counted as really three times because the fourth one you're killing the enemy, so it doesn't really count. Also, revives don't count as well. Let's just say you kill a goddess Liz, you don't get 7% basic stats, you just trigger the revive. Which, of course, then you have to kill her again to actually get the basic stat increase. But overall, uh, I think her passive being set to humans only is okay because there's only one catastrophe that isn't human, and that's Camilla. And from what they've shown us, Camilla's never going to be meh. I think it's because she's a transformation character. They've decided to just scrap her whole... She could be good in PvP. Unless, of course, they make an Awakened version of Camilla. Which she's still needing of an Awakened version. There are, I'm pretty sure, Shin... Who else? Roxy recently got one. Actually, let me check. Uh, well, that's on attributes, characteristics. So, it's pretty much... I think it's just Camilla. Camilla and Shin are the only two characters that now don't have an Awakened version. But when we do get an Awakened one, I'm not sure if she'll be really good. Uh, Shin, I do see Shin being somewhat meta, but that's only because of uh, race. Uh, humans have decent support. Mainly Red Arthur, of course. Uh, there's a new Arthur dropping soon, uh, this week sometime. 
maybe he will be able to, I don't know, make humans even better. Because he's going to have to be better than this author here. He's going to have to be better than him in terms of his passive and all that kind of stuff. But I do see humans definitely being a, a solid character. Of course, they're definitely not going to be as tanky as uh, unknowns. And they're definitely not going to be as powerful as humans. But they might have a, a chance against... They might have a one-shot capability chance, or like a, a somewhat tanky build. It's all like when Purgatory Barn... Oh, sorry, when, uh, yeah, when Purgatory Barn dropped. Uh, Barn was just a force to be reckoned with. You would you, you could not win anything against Barn. Barn would just mince your entire team for fun. But anyway, moving on to Ultimate. Uh, once again, just a normal Flood ult. There's nothing stupidly insane. No, like, 6-6 six, six stupid broken effect, like Rupture or something like that. Just a normal Ultimate. Of course, the more copies of have, you have of her, the better, because of course that's more CC, which is kind of what you want uh, when you're doing PvP, is you want as the, highest, as, uh, the highest amount of CC you can possibly get. Uh, onto equipment, I've just literally just given her SR perfect gear, because if I'm still using her, 56k CC is not, not the lowest. I don't think I actually have a set for... I don't actually have a set for Eastern, anyway. I would, let's just say you were using her... You have a, you have, you're committed to making a catastrophe team. You know everyone else has got UR gear. Then yeah, sure, make a UR gear because then that, that makes sense because you already put the investment into other characters on that team. But unless she becomes meta breaking, I don't see the point of giving her UR gear, or unless she has a a really good purpose or she is ex very exclusive. Yes, you could say that she is a seasonal character, so she is somewhat exclusive, but she's not ex is uh, not as exclusive as collaboration characters. Or, yeah, that's really a collaboration character. She's not an exclusive as a collaboration character, but she's a seasonal, so she's just below that. But still, there's a lot of bad seasonal characters. On to her outfits, once again, I showed at the start, I only have the free to play ones. Uh, some of these from like events, I'm pretty sure this is an event one. Uh, you've then got, of course, her current one, which is the magician one. Halloween, missing a weapon, I'm pretty sure these weapons, yeah, these weapons are the two diamond weapons. I'm pretty sure that has been a free weapon. So if you played the Hawk Pass back when the red one first dropped, not the Halloween Awakened Decent, but the other one. Uh, you could have got the like chef's like chef's like wand one, which was I guess a free alpha uh, free outfit and a free weapon. So that was really the only time you could get the fifth weapon for free. Apart from that, all of these stuff has been free. Which is pretty good. Holy Relic stats, a lot of defense, which is kind of what she needs. She isn't the tankiest character, as you saw she has very low defense related stats. So a lot of defense, it's okay. Uh, attack. I don't think she needs that much attack. I would have sacrificed a, quite. I would have sacrificed like a hundred attack for like an extra like three hundred extra HP. But uh, the extra hundred, the extra attack does help with CC quite a bit, as attack is a very good giver of CC. I'm pretty sure it's a one to one ratio. One attack uh, equals one extra CC. So it's not too bad. Of course, then when you mix that with the percentages on these perfect rolls SR gear, you actually get a lot of CC out of it, which is kind of good. But anyway, that's it for Easton. I do see that she could have a potential in the future, especially if they barn, they buff Barn and Barn becomes good. You know, there's a lot of stuff that she could be useful for. But unfortunately, Barn is very restrictive. Humans don't really have the best of teams. The only really good taunt human or the booster human is very old. He's two years old. This She came out in 2021. So yeah, two years old. Like now, which is pretty old for stats. He's got horrible stats. Even his taunt, he still gets mince through his taunt by Nipes and the characters. Like if you, let's just say you were to compare Queen Deanne to Red Arthur, the Red Torn Arthur. They both have stances, so but of course they both take 40% extra damage from Melee. Deanne may get crit like once and loses like half HP. Arthur just disintegrates. He gets crit every time and he's dead within like the first two hits. Because his stats are very low. I do think that yes the LR system is cool, but they need to as well buff older characters when they want to bring out a meta. For example, they bring out human... Let's just say Barnes is now going to be a human character. He, you know, he doesn't care about if they're sins or humans. It's fine. I think what they could have done is... Now, you've done that. Boost the older human characters that would help him, especially Arthur. Unless, it's, of course, this new Arthur is completely off the rails and I ain't going to say anything. He's free, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching the video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.